Hi, we're going to talk about different ways to add texture. We're also going to talk about the opacity uh, cutout slider. Um, first, let's start with the opacity cutout slider. So let's just throw on just a basic wardrobe option here. Okay. And um, one of the tools you can use is called the surface um, selection tool. Um, so you can select different surfaces, which is a little different than selecting bones. So let's look at this um, in this bra. It has actually different components on its um, structure. So if I wanted to remove the straps over here, you can see because I selected that surface and I'm in the surface parameter tab, um, you can um, actually um, alter or adjust um, that. You can change its color, but let's just say we want to remove it. And I clicked on I selected uh, or typed in opacity here to find that slider and you can actually remove those not permanently but just so that you can't see those kind of like turning off the eyeball but it's you're um, changing the opacity on that certain element so you can check you know different areas there might be elastic no oh, on the, the um, underwear there doesn't seem to be different elements that you can alter but on the bra you can you can play with different things so that's something just good to know in general now we're going to go over to um, we're going to clear out of opacity um, and one thing we talked about um, previously is that you can um, if you can play around with the base color you can bring in um, an image if you want um, of any kind of texture if you want to play with adding a texture to your figure that way. So um, that's one way to adjust um, the texture of your figure. You can also do that um, by part. So instead of doing the entire body, if there was just a color or a kind of a, a texture you wanted to bring into just one part, let's just say I wanted to do the torso. And this is this is interesting right here. You can see I wonder if I can bring this up. Let me. Yeah. OK, great. So you can see this picture under base color when I've selected the surface of the torso and you can see this picture of this kind of unwrapped um, skin and that's a UV map. Um, so that I want to come back to. But in the meantime, I'm just going to show you that you can just click on base color browse. Um, and it's taking me into the um, the DAZ folders, which, as you can see, all these UV maps, and we'll come back to that. Um, but we can go over here, and we'll go to my, I've got some textures loaded up. And let's say I just wanted to throw this texture in the mix. I can do that. So I, it can even kind of um, be a sub for clothes a little bit if I wanted it to. But that's just one way to do that. Um, so let's go back. Um, and another way uh, to do that is to actually go into Photoshop and paint on a UV map and then bring that uh, JPEG up in your selection. So I'm going to do that now. So now I'm in Photoshop and I've opened the, um, I just want to show you the file, is when you save Genesis, you get, you are, you get the map saved. So um, I've got uh, Genesis 8 base uh, torso uh, material. So that's what I opened. And then what I've done is I have um, placed um, a texture on top. You can see that texture is on top here. And then I've just adjusted its um, blending mode um, to color burn. I'm playing with the different blending modes to see which one I want. I've also did a hue adjustment layer and a levels adjustment layer. Um, you know, there's a lot of options here that you can play around with and, and kind of find one um, that you like. I kind of like multiply in this particular setting. I'm, I've played with the opacity a little bit of the layer just to see, um, you know, because I kind of want some of this to show through. Um, so I think that's kind of a nice look um, because you want, that's interesting too, um, yeah, you want some of this, um, you want, you want the texture to overlap, but you want still some of the skin information. Um, I'll show you also how you can just simply paint on there. So there's some nice things happening. So I want to save that as a, um, I'm just going to save this as blue, uh, ground 
texture and I'm going to, you have to save it as a JPEG. It's in my maps. Um, and then you can go over back here and go to the base color and click browse. And I'm going over to my maps. Oh, this is back into the DAS folders. I'm going to go into my folders that I've directed my saves to go to. And you might still have yours in the DAS, doesn't matter, DAS folders. Um, and then I open that up. And it's nice because you can still see, you know, the belly button um, and some of the skin texture. So it, it creates a different effect. And if I was to do the, now you still do see some seams. Um, so that's something you want to keep in mind too. So a way to get less of a seam on a pattern is to search for a seamless pattern. Now see, there's still a little bit of uh, element here, but you know, if you're working from these four paintings, it's not going to really matter so much, but it's, uh, so what I did in Photoshop was I brought in uh, a seamless lace, um, pattern and then I, um, used a multiply layer, um, and played with that. Um, so that creates a cool effect too. You can also play with the different, you know, you can play with more blending modes to see which one you want. And, um, it's just a normal you're going to just see that right on top so this is a quick way to make a composite you know you can do overlay and make the lace white you can save that as white lace torso and make sure to save it as a jpeg and um and then i can go back and try that And that's pretty nice. I like the way that's looking. Um, it, this is just a pattern that doesn't have a lot of uh, texture to it, but it's a cool, a cool look. Very quickly achieved um, by just bringing in that UV map, and it's pretty consistent. Um, could even become some sort of clothes inspiration. Um, so that's pretty cool that you can do that um, pretty easily. You can also, um, you can also paint on the face UV map if you wanted to do um, some makeup, let's say, um, and you wanted to, let's see, you wanted to do like a really strong purple eyeshadow um, on your actual, oops, and we have uh, a pretty large brush here and it's pretty soft. There we go. So say I wanted to do some really fun eyeshadow. Maybe I wanted to do you know some nice kind of a winged purple 1980s style makeup. I can do that easily. And also give her lip color. I can make alter. I can do all sorts of things. I can make a star here, heart here. <laughs> can really have fun just seeing the effects that you can create with just Z, some zigzags. Okay, so I'm going to save this as uh, Playface. And it's a JPEG. And then I can go into the surface selector to the face, look up and do the same process, go over into my folder that I've saved these at. Um, and open that up, zoom in. And you can see, uh, you can see the, the stuff that I put on. Actually, the eyeshadow looks pretty cool. <laughs> but you can really get, you can have a lot of fun with this. And then when you go into your eye ray, um, that can really be 
uh, a fun effect. So you can see you're getting some pretty cool uh, quick effects and there's a lot of possibilities with something like this for prepping for um, uh, source photos. We'll go over to Cartoon Shaded too because this is a pretty fun uh, a pretty fun mode too. I mean you can actually get some pretty neat things out of this as well. Um, you can also bring in um, images onto primitive surfaces if you wanted to make some sort of backdrop you can do it on a plane or a cube. Um, so you can go over here to similar to base color, diffuse color, um, you can browse and you can pick out um, you know any pattern that you want um, and let's just go to um, let's do this one. Okay, we're still in cartoon shaded. Let's go into texture shaded. And then you can play with um, how much, okay, that image is pretty blurry. Well, let's let's take a look at the tiling. So um, you can go down to um, the uh, tiling on this um, and, and re realize when you're doing this that um, this is just a photograph that's, um, that is projected on here so it's not actually changing the geometry so you can um, change the amount of horizontal offset so you can change how many you're getting so i can increase that and make it a lot more which might actually be better for this kind of lower res photograph that i'm working with for this example and then i can change the offset as well vertical and I can kind of keep changing this. So then you just have a projected image on top of this cube, you know, again, not changing any of the geometry, but that's another way to play around with, um, you know, bringing in a texture and you can control that texture in Photoshop and then save it and then drag, you know, and then put it on there. But this is a quick way to change the amount of tiling. So that's very helpful. Um, for different projects. So I hope this helps.